Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's lovely to be back. This is my second video now after a very long pause from doing these videos. It was a time where I was really asking God uh, to guide me uh, as to whether this, you know, is what I'm meant to be doing. But number one, also, am I doing it in the way that he wishes? Um, and um, I'm slowly starting to believe that, yes, this is... Um, this work is something that people are, is helping people. Uh, and so I'm so delighted uh, to be with you today to share another video. Now, the topic for today is, oh, and also um, for those of you that don't know, my name's Christiana Davidson. I'm a psychotherapist and I'm a woman of great faith as well. Uh, I'm a Christian Catholic woman and I, uh, bring that into the work that I do with clients who struggle uh, to set themselves free uh, from the impact of a dysfunctional family system like a narcissistic one where you've had a narcissistic parent, an enabler parent, uh, siblings, uh, the whole dynamic. Um, and I think in my personal opinion, this is also a spiritual malady. Uh, that comes down to us through our family uh, generations. Um, and so I do bring in uh, the spiritual uh, in the work uh, to free you spiritually uh, as well. Okay, so the topic for today is reject yourself or be rejected. The price of being in a narcissistic family system. It's all about rejection. So let's get straight into this now. So this was the deal in childhood, if you come from a narcissistic family system. You had to reject and suppress your true self, so your individuality. You had to get rid of your individuality. What does that mean? Your needs, your likes, your dislikes, who you really are, actually in order not to be rejected by your parents. You see, it was your self that was the problem. You having a self was the problem. Why? Well, being yourself was seen as you being self-centered, selfish to your narcissistic parents. You tuning in to your likes, your needs, expressing them, is you expressing yourself. But in a narcissistic family system, it centers, everything centers around the needs of the narcissistic parents. It's their needs that are what dictates how everyone should act and behave. You see, they are allowed to be selfish, but you, as a child, are shamed for having a self, for, for allowing focus to come on you <laughs> And your needs and, and you being an individual, perhaps different to them, means that you are taking focus away from the parents. No, you as the child in a narcissistic family system are there to support the system. The system supports the parents. You're there to be seen when you're allowed to be seen, but quietly, uh, and not heard. Your voice is not to be heard. Uh, only a voice that echoes what the parents uh, wish to hear. And you're only allowed to be seen as a reflection of what the parents wish to see in you. Why? so that the parents can be seen and heard by you. That is your role as a child in the narcissistic family system. 
You have to see your parents. You have to hear them. And you have to internalize their needs at the center of your world in order to make yourself lovable. So that's the unspoken exchange. And as a child, you learned that this is love, that this is how you receive and give love. You receive love in exchange for minimizing you. You are not of value unless you are minimizing you and becoming a you that is usable, that is uh, focused on meeting the parent's unspoken needs sometimes. So in other words, in order to become lovable, in order to be lovable as a child, you learn to be selfless. <laughs> and you'll hear here, you know, some almost, you know, Christian concepts or spiritual concepts, you know, selflessness is deemed as the highest uh, virtue. And we have to be very careful here because selflessness is in fact in these narcissistic family systems, it's it's blurred with the concept of abandoning self, of rejecting the self. So becoming selfless in the narcissistic family system is what makes you of value. It is your self, your selflessness to your parents that makes you lovable. It's your willingness to sacrifice self, to sacrifice yourself, your life, who you are, your voice, and your willingness to see that part of you as something that has no value. That's what makes you lovable to your parents. And when you don't do that, when you start to express yourself at different times, quite often you'll be shamed for that. And of course, then it's reinforced that if you do become yourself, your authentic self, it's somehow a guilty thing. It's laden with guilt uh, because you internalize that that's you being selfish. Uh, that's that that's you uh, being self-centered and and focusing too much on you. No, that's the part of you which is the shame part. Your authentic self. And of course, then the work we do with me in particular is we bring your authentic self. We make, we allow you to become selfish, self-centered in the healthiest of ways. And it does bring up a lot of guilt. It does. But those feelings of guilt are the sign that you are coming back to life. That life is being breathed into that suppressed, depressed, rejected, abandoned, devalued part of you, which is actually the treasure that you are here to bring to this world. This treasure that you are, each one of you listening now. And that's my prayer today as I put this video out there, that the Holy Spirit, the God, the universe will breathe back life into the lungs of your authentic you and that you will come to discover the sheer delight in finally getting to know you free from your parents' chaos. That is the work of healing and it's the most difficult journey, but 
you know, difficult journeys lead to incredible views. Um, and that's the work I do here. That's why I called my 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 therapy business delightinyou.com. Okay, so th there are two different types of mothers here, uh, parents that um, will will help to diminish the you uh, in you. So the first one is the smothering mother who wishes to dominate and stamp out yourself. She wishes to blur and merge herself into you so you can never be individual. She wants to take over yourself and dictate by drip feed messages who she says yourself is. She is the one who lets, who tells you who you are. She doesn't allow you to emerge. She isn't inquisitive about who you are. No, she tells you who you are. And when you don't comply with that, that's when you're going to be rejected. And she does this so that yourself is servant to her. The self that she projects onto you is servant to her needs. Now, on the other hand, the rejecting mother gets you to reject yourself, much like the smothering mother does, but in a different way, by making you believe you are somehow defective, somehow inherently bad, and that you simply don't fit in with herself. It's yourself that is unlovable and she doesn't want to merge with you. She doesn't want to merge with you uh, as she might be merging with a sibling. And that's the pain there of that child. You can see the sibling being merged with, but the mother doesn't want to merge with them. In, instead, rejects an outcast. So... This type of mother creates uh, a pattern in this child of rejection. Um, the child goes on to believe that uh, they, wherever they go, they're going to be rejected. Uh, and so oftentimes this type of child will create rejection by acting up, by rebelling, um, so that it can almost take control of the rejection in some ways. Um, and sometimes can be rejecting of others uh, so that they protect themselves from being rejected first. So both uh, this, these types of children uh, in these family systems subconsciously try to take power back over the situation by rejecting their true self. By almost coming alongside the parent and saying, yes, I agree with you. It's my true self. It's my individualness that's the problem here. If only I could just get rid of, of my differentness. Uh, if only I could get rid of those things that don't align with your needs, then, then everything would be okay. It's, it's myself that's the problem here. It's my selfishness. That's the problem. I'm too self-centered. So it's as if uh, the child joins the parent and agrees that they have, the child has a selfish, inner, authentic self at the core. And they too hate their self and try to become selfless by stuffing down their true beliefs, their likes, their feelings, their personality, their gifts, all of those things. But actually, to be honest, many clients that come to me are not, not able to know, don't actually know uh, what their true self is like, what their true beliefs are, what their likes, what their feelings, you know, they, they just don't know because it's, it, it, it's not something they've been able to explore. 
And that is the real tragedy here because these children and all children, all children, in fact, look to their parents to get to know who they are and who they are not. And it's the role of the parent to nurture uh, this self-discovery just as much as the child is getting to know itself through the parent. It's also the parent who should be wanting to get to know this new human being, this separate personality, and they should be nurturing that, being inquisitive and excited to discover uh, the otherness of this child who may have similar things, but differences, uh, its own unique personality. That is the role of the parent to give space for that you to emerge. But in these families, that is seen as selfish uh, and it's it's shut down so that it cannot happen. Um, so, you know, clients come to me and they they don't know who they are. And, and so this is the work we have to do to be free. Uh, we have to begin discovering who you are. And this is the wonderful work as a therapist. I get to be inquisitive. I, I get to step in and discover uh, that hidden self uh, that that so many of my clients believe cannot be them. Uh, and it's often the, the man or woman they've always dreamed of being. That's actually their true self. They're longing for that connection. Um, and trust me, if you're brave enough to start being that you that you've banished, to have an individual voice and opinions and to speak up and not to be constantly needing validation from others to say that that's okay. Well, the rest is history and you will lead a life full of, full of passion. Uh, you, you'll, you'll be alive in life, in this life, not existing. Um, and I truly believe that that is what God wishes to do. Um, and, and that's why I, I, I base all I do. Um, and I, I, I pray now that I, I am able to do that, um, to be a facilitator of that um, in all my clients. Uh, it's the greatest honor because um, in my own life, uh, I too uh, get to experience times um, more and more where I've become uh, the woman, the me that was banished. Uh, but the thing is, you know, I thought she, I thought nobody knew her <laughs> except me. Uh, now I realize. Somebody always did. I was always seen and known. It was God who saw me and has been calling me back to life all these years. And so I humbly thank God for this and, you know, wish to, to pass this gift uh, on to all those who are seeking seeking it too. Reach out to me if you would like to work with me. Uh, I uh, have a website, www.delightinyou.com, uh, and uh, we can go from there. Take care, everybody. Bye now.